And at the conference in Geneva, the Israeli delegation is putting forth a unique proposal which could bring woolly mammoths back from the dead. Now, woolly mammoths went extinct more than 4,000 years ago, but they hope that by reclassifying them as endangered, it could help living elephants who are being killed for their ivory, which is sometimes sold under the label of mammoth ivory. Now, joining us from Geneva is Joshua Shuki Donitsa, head of the Law Enforcement Division at the Israel Nature and Parks Authority. Shuki, thank you so much for joining us. Now, first of all, can you, oh. please, can you please explain in more detail what are the goals of your proposal? Yes, uh, our proposal goal is to uh, save the elephant. As we all know, uh, all over around the world, there's about uh, 450,000 elephants. Uh, it sounds a lot, but it's not because each year there's about 20,000 elephant kills by a year. It's about a half an hour per, per elephant. It's amazing. So uh, Israel is doing uh, a lot of efforts to uh, save those elephants. And one of the efforts is uh, actually it's the goal of uh, what they, uh, our proposal now is uh, also to forbid the trade by uh, mammoth uh, uh, ivory. And the base of it, it's uh, because it's look like. And it's, uh, if, you, if you are scientific, maybe it's much easier for you to distinguish between elephant ivory and mammut ivory. But if you're, let's say, a regular customer, a custom person, it's uh, come to be a, a big uh, issue and big problem. And probably you won't be able to uh, uh, sure. define between the, the two uh, kind of uh, ivory. For sure. Now, just how vulnerable are elephants? And if we don't curb this issue now, how long will it be before we see an irreversible decline in their numbers too? It's, uh, it's a big issue for, uh, for a couple of years. Uh, there's uh, many kind of uh, African countries that are trying to protect uh, their elephant, but uh, still there's a demand for the ivory. And as I mentioned before, uh, about 20,000 elephants uh, per year are, are been killed just for their ivory. They are not, uh, they, uh, they don't eat the meat of the elephant, it's just for the ivory. And, uh, and we, have to, we have to save them. And uh, the numbers are cutting down every year. And this is the reason why Israel is taking that uh, proposal just now. Actually, this is the second time that Israel is uh, uh, pushing this, uh, this uh, proposal uh, in the, uh, the CITES. Convention. So how is it, is there any form of punishment, regulation or consequences that is held against people or places or countries for that matter from the international community or from CITES? This, this, is, uh, this is one of the main uh, um, problems uh, with uh, uh, mammoth ivory, which is not uh, regulated uh, any, any, anywhere in the world. You can trade with it. So if you trade and you label the, the row, the, the mammoth row, as a, as a, as a mammoth, um, there's no punishment unless uh, yeah, you define it an, uh, as an elephant ivory. Uh, so there's no punishment for the trade of a mammoth ivory. That is unfortunately, of course. Un that is very unfortunate indeed. And so, where are the, where what where are these countries where this issue is more pressing, either in the view of elephant poaching or ivory imports? And how are the countries itself tackling the issue? Yes, the same countries that are dealing with the ivory. It's the source. Uh, in, it's uh, some some uh, countries from Africa. This is uh, where the source where the ivory, uh, the, the elephant ivory came. And uh, most of it goes to, to the east. Most of it goes to the east uh, for medicine and other uh, um, purposes, but uh, uh, it comes from Africa and it goes to the east. And Shuki, there's been a lot of buzz surrounding this proposal that's been put forward, especially in the media. Now, voting on pro proposals will only come at the end of the conference, but how has it been received so far? Uh, we had quite a lot of, of uh, interesting uh, uh, countries, uh, delegation is coming to us. Some of them are supporting our uh, proposal. And uh, it's, uh, we hope, we hope that this time and this scope, more and more countries will uh, uh, join us uh, with this proposal. And let's hope, let's hope for the elephant. Uh, you know, the elephant become a, a kind of a symbol of uh, uh, saving the, the wildlife. 
And uh, we really hope that this time uh, more and more countries uh, will join us uh, and support this proposal. I really do hope so as well. And just finally, Shuki, before I let you go, explain to us how Israel fits into this whole equation. Israel, Israel has a long history of uh, saving wildlife in Israel and all over the world. That's why we joined the, uh, this uh, convention. And uh, that's why we are pushing not only elephant, many other wildlife, a giraffe, a cheetahs, uh, and many other kinds of species that are in danger.